Today's the day when you're going to watch a million videos on the Z370 uh, motherboards, but this is going to be the best one. Guaranteed or your money back. You guys, are, are you paying for it? All right, so this is the Z370 Professional, uh, and this is the Fatality Edition, which is pretty much the top of the line gaming board from ASRock right now. They've thrown all the bells and whistles on this. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to cover everything on the board, give you a full tour and explain all the different things all the way down to the, you know, the MOSFETs, capacitors, the different connectors, just give you guys a full rundown of what's on the board. We're going to show you some overclocking results we got. We're going to go through the UEFI. We're going to check out their uh, prepackaged software. And then we're going to go wear silly hats and play in traffic. All right, here we go. There's the uh, Fatality motherboard on the, on, the, on the desk right there. So you see we got the sort of more of a minimalistic compared to a lot of gaming motherboards as far as the I.O. I mean, the I.O. area and just the whole, you know, general shield and ID goes. The color Let's, scheme is very, very muted. Yeah, it's no longer the red. I mean, gamer thing. So it's sort of they've grown up. After 20 years, Fatality has decided that, you know, he doesn't want his boards to just be giant red masses of... Ocular cavity Ocular destru destruction. So we just lifted that off so you can see what's going on underneath here. I think a lot of people are going to immediately, I mean, other than the new bells and whistles and features, a lot of people are going to wonder, you know, what, what is the quality of the components around the CPU? So let's talk about um, the VRM here. And as you can see, CPU is going to go right there. 40, 40 lanes, is that what it is? 40, 40. 40 lanes of yeah. PCI Express from so the that's CPU. that's nice. And we're going to be using that all over the place. But first off, let's go through starting with the 12K caps right here and just show you guys what the VRAGs are like. Yep, so we've got Nichicon 12K caps, the black caps, the Japanese ones. Everybody loves them, everybody uses them. ASRock has been using them on their high-end systems for a long time, so it's not any surprise to see it. Now, behind that, we've got 60 amp alloy chokes. These things, again, ASRock's been using them. They're great, we love seeing them. 14 of those Sinopower FETs running on an Intracell 7 phase 450 amp ISL 69138 VRM controller. Lives over here, kind of a strange spot, but you know, there it is. So they say it's a 12 phase, so you got a couple extra phases for probably the iGPU um, right there. Uh, we got, the, you know, of course, power right there. We have a couple different options for CPU fan. We got CPU fan, and then over here, you've got a, a pump connector, all PWM. Another uh, fan down there, chassis fan. Another fan, lots and lots of fan connectors. Up here, we've got a little switch for the XMP. Uh, of course, there's the RAM. I just totally skipped over the RAM. No one cares about RAM, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, you know. DD, DD ASRock DD4, only yeah. lets you run it at 8 gigahertz if you can do that. <laughs> it's in the UFI. You guys saw it. <laughs> yeah, the UFI is a bit ridiculous with this, but uh, I'd say you'll probably be getting, you know, 3,000, 4,000 without much trouble on this, depending on your configuration. 24-pin um, power connector right there. USB 3. USB 3.1 Gen 2 for the front right there. Another L connector for another USB uh, 3. Then we've got eight uh, SATA connectors over here, all your different hard drives. Moving on down to the bottom, have power and reset on board. And then we've got all your front panel connectors and then some you know LEDs. And then there's the RGB connector right there. Fans, USB 2. That is gonna be your Thunderbolt header. Then the TPM uh, beside that. We actually have a spot where you can clear your CMOS right here with a jumper, old school. Oh yeah. yeah. Then over here, let's move over into the audio section. So over here, you've got your uh, front panel HD audio, and this is amped for up to 600 ohm uh, headphones. You've got some specific audio caps there, and the PCB is separated. You can see as the little line right there separated out, um, and that's gonna be a, um, a real tech. I believe it's the ALC 1220. 1220 on there, and it's also running some creative software, 120 signal noise ratio as far as the decibels on that go, so that's pretty fancy. And I guess it's about time to check out the PCI Express slots and the M.2. So they're really using all of those lanes right here. And you see we've got three slots. What's the configuration? I forget. It's a 16, so 16 for, for one, then it's eight and eight for two, and then it's eight for four, right? Yes. Hey, I got it. All right. And all of the M.2s can run at either SATA or PCI Express Gen 3 X4. And I would expect some NVMe RAID on these things. So we've got uh, three of those right there, and that's where you're going to be using all your lanes. Some super high speed, and this also works with uh, the Intel Optane, mm -hmm. and that'll allow you to put one of the Intel Optane sticks in here and then just speed up whatever you're doing on your slower hard drives. Your yeah. you can of spinning discs and that sort of thing. So that's kind of a cool new technology they've got going on here. Then you get your 1X connectors right there. And uh, this is going to be all covered up by the, the shield. And that little guy right there is just a plug for the LEDs that are inside there. So uh, anything else I missed there? Turn Underneath around, look at the back. this heat sink mm -hmm. is a 10 gig Ethernet. Oh, yeah, that's that's what we got right there. 
10 gig ethernet. We'll show you the back now. So on the back, got your audio connectors, SPDIF and all that. And then we've got gigabit, gigabit, and also 10 gig. <laughs> That's ridiculous. With teaming support in Windows 7 RS2. So you got teaming and you also have Azrock software for packet prioritization if you wanted to use it and have, you know, like one B for Twitch and one B for your game so they don't mess with each other. But teaming is also gonna be great if you wanted to do with 10 gig, Jesus. Yeah. And teaming on the two one gig, I mean, you could have like two gig with teaming on that. So The 10 yeah. gig can also operate as a one gig. So you can actually have three one gig connections all teamed up. So the rest of the back here, which will give you a really quick overview. You've got some USB 3.0, you can see there. There's USB 3.1, type C, uh, and regular 3.1. And uh, then we've got the display port, HDMI. You guys are looking at two antennas for their, uh, uh, that's the 1811 uh, AC. And also, this is on another M.2. You can actually remove this if you take the screws off the bottom and you want to maybe either upgrade or install something else there. But we got two antennas there. And then behind that, we've got PS2 and a couple more USB plus a CMOS reset button right there. It's hard to see, but you got to take my word for it. So one of these is actually going to be a fatality, quote unquote, uh, like a high speed or whatever USB port for gaming peripherals that need extremely good response times. Yeah, so low super, latency. Super low latency USB port for mice. You can use the PS2 port for mice or keyboard with a Y cable. There's this option in the UEFI that you've seen or will see. And uh, if that doesn't do the trick for you, you can use a USB with the fatality software and, and just have a low latency mouse connection there. All right, one of the things that's really cool about uh, these ASRock boards is a lot of them have, and this one does have, uh, the BCLK engine on board. And that, what that allows you to do is it allows you to overclock uh, using the strap rather than using the multiplier. If you have an Intel chip that's a non-K part, you generally can't overclock those. Back in the day, you used to be able to go in and just mess with the, uh, you know, the, the I guess front side bus really and, and overclock it, but Intel kind of locked that down. So what companies like ASRock have been doing is adding this BCLK chip on board that will just allow you to do it anyway. Even if Intel says, no, you can't do it. As Rock's like, we're gonna do it. We're gonna let people overclock. So you'll be able to get a non-K part and overclock using these boards. And that's a really cool feature. And we tested it and it works. So mentioning the test, let's go over and take a look at, well, first off the UEFI. Should we, should we look at the most important thing first? The uh, RGB, right? We absolutely. Show us the RGB. So oh, in sorry. the UEFI, you can mess with the RGB. That's a pretty fancy uh, setup there. You can go off. Yep. You can go static and change your color. Ooh. Is it doing it in real time? Oh yeah, it does it in real time. There you go. And if you go all the way down, then it breathes a little faster. You got strobe, which is the uh, seizure inducer. We oh, love this man, one. nightmare mode, I like to call it. Oh, I like that. There you go. You know, it is, it is almost <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> and we've got cycling, which is really, really just going through RGB. All right, UEFI, um, anything really new worth taking a look at in here? Uh, the OC settings are a little bit different. If you've, if you've played with Cabby Lake or Skylake, you're already going to understand what everything here is. It's pretty much the same shebang. you got all the same settings. Some are missing. Um, I've noticed that a couple of the VCCIO settings are missing from Cabby Lake. But honestly, it, stuff that you wouldn't be playing with normally. Still got XMP profiles for DRAM. You've got BCLK, you've got speed settings for whatever DRAM speeds you want. These support up to 433 officially, but, or 4333. It's got stuff that's in there for LN2 or whatever? Yeah, but you can go up to, I why? mean, there's settings all the way up to 8 gigahertz if I, you want I, it. Why? Okay, I guess if you wanted to. Yep, and then you've got your timing. This is something that I think changed from the last generation. Tighten up the timings a little bit? Yeah, the timings are a little bit more accessible. They're not quite buried into a menu as much as they used to be. Yeah, but they're there. It's the main thing. They're here. They're just, you just scroll down. You get third timings, fourth timings. If you're that kind of overclocker, you go all the way in. <coughs> and you've got ODT settings and everything. So, oh. Yeah, no, and I say this is only for the top 1, 1, 1, 1, 1.1 percent. What do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like the way, way top percent. So. Yeah, if you're, if you're somebody who likes to really screw with tertiary timings on DDR4, then you're going to have a fun time with these boards. And then you've got OC mode and stable mode for voltage. OC mode just increases the max voltage for your, your offset. Mm. Um, and of course you do offset or fixed for V-Core. Probably doing this, you wanna play around with fixed and then once you find something, then try to find an offset that works. Yeah. You know, when you're first just playing around, but you can do it either way. So this is, there's only one setting for VCCIO that I found. I think on the last board there were three. 
So it's a little interesting to have a couple of things cut out, but I think it's because of the Coffee Lake architecture being, while it's still Sky Lake in its essence, it has changed a little bit in the way that voltage is supplied. Now you got your low line calibration on level three. Is any bead droop or anything like that you noticed? No, not really. Um, it was uh, a little bit of V droop at level five. That's pretty cool. They've got it. Oh, they do have a chart. Just, just to show you, like, so level one is going to be the, yeah. the top there. I set it to level three because we are running a fairly aggressive overclock, and it was seeing a little bit of voltage droop. Um, and setting it to level three kind of kept it at the higher end. It did force a little bit more voltage through than I'm comfortable with, but the temperatures were fine, so I left it alone. There's a couple of different temperatures where they start doing micro throttling, and then they go to full core throttling, and then they go to full die throttling. And then obviously you've got your CPU configuration. Everything tells you everything you need to know about your CPU. You can disable hyperthreading. You can disable cores, C states. You've got C states for package. You've got C states for. Um, everything on the board. Guys, in an upcoming video, we're gonna disable hybrid threading and sort of simulate an i5 and just see what we can do with the uh, BCLK overclocking. But yeah. that'll be coming up soon. That was a, that's a fun one. You're gonna, you guys are gonna love that. There's still a lot of good stuff linked to the chipset. Despite most of it being on the CPU now, you do get a lot of good stuff. This board has a 10 gig LAN port, so you can enable that here. Mm -hmm. um, HD audio is still to the front. You've got a couple of gig ports. They're each their own controller, so they, all, they both do their own thing and you can enable or disable those there. Obviously, iGPU is still around because Intel. And then uh, you've got a bunch of just deep sleep stuff you can mess with. And then PCI Express link speeds. Thunderbolt, <coughs> these boards have a Thunderbolt uh, header on the board. So if you wanna deal with that, you've got your options here. Just basically enables or disables it, but it's there. You get your PS2, so you can set a uh, Y cable for keyboard and mouse because it's only got one PS2 port and it's a combo port. And you've got all your suspending and um, and wake on LAN and then USB configuration, which is fairly fairly straightforward. This board does have a special USB port for uh, low latency USB mice for if you want to do Twitch shooters and such as that. Uh, XHCI handoff is in here as well for USB support in an operating system that maybe doesn't have the drivers installed yet. You can say you can change that around and and see if you can get your your new OS to load it. Like Windows 8 might do that. You'll have to disable that or enable that to get it to load USB drivers. Uh, and then you got security, which is just your uh, trusted processing and trusted uh, compute yeah. mode and all that. So UEFI is gonna be based upon what operating system you're gonna use mostly. But and you guys can come in and really <clears throat> get granular with it if you want to go into advanced mode. But RAID installer, this is the advanced mode. The standard mode is mm -hmm. you press F6 to get out of it. That's your standard UEFI. Pretty well built for just you can do a lot of stuff in one spot. Poking around, yeah, you can enable uh, XMP, disable XMP, you can't do any overclocking, but you can do RAID mode, you can configure all your drives here, boot priority, yep. and it's got a hardware monitor right here. And what button do you press just to go into the vents? F6? F6. Hardware monitor with all the voltage information you need. You've got a fan tuning system down here, which you can set up anytime you want. And then boot settings here for hard, hard drive setup, BBS, DVD-ROM if you have one for a legacy mode, which is probably going to be necessary if you're running Windows 7. I think this board does actually support fast boot on Windows 7, which is nice. <laughs> All right, so that's the uh, UEFI. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Look Every time it. you say those words, Look. it makes me worry. It yeah. might just be the devil himself. So if you click install all, you're going to get that crap. But most people are not going to install all. It's not like a laptop where it comes pre-installed with the bloatware. We installed the bloatware ourselves. We accidentally, what the we, internet. Just by clicking install all, but we wanted to show you guys the software, so let's take a tour of that. Yeah. All right, so, um, <laughs> yeah, ASRock has an app store now. I'm gonna need to sit down for this. Come over here and take a look. So their app store doesn't have much going on. You've got the RGB LED software. You've got some Sound Blaster stuff. I, I, I don't know. This is recommended, so I wanna know how much, I mean, Norton obviously paid for that crap, but whatever, it's there. Chrome is recommended. This is actually handy. Um, you can update your BIOS, UEFI, whatever. Some of your drivers as media, stuff like that. You can update stuff right here. Look at that latest version. I don't know, let's just go ahead and update this. So check mark there, hit update. We'll come back to that in just a second. A quick restart to UEFI if you want to just quickly go in there without having to <laughs> hit, the, hit the delete key over and over again. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's tiny. You can't scroll it, it won't let you scroll. Oh, you have to be hovering right on the little thing. Okay, so you got your app charger. This this basically just ensures that you're, you know, sending as many amps of power to your phone as it can handle. And uh, that's an app there. Fatality mouse port, that's 
I guess you need an app for that. Yeah, the Fatality board has a single USB port for low latency mice. So Keymaster's pretty cool. Just gives you macro keys, sniper keys, and that sort of thing. It's free download. There's a bunch of little apps in here. XFast LAN, that's their, I guess, packet prioritization software. Pretty new and basic, but there it is. Free, go, yay. XFast LAN. Uh, this is the main thing I'm gonna be using this for, is updating this stuff. So I'll go ahead and update the UEFI right now. Downloading the BIOS, and uh, that's very easy. Yeah, you don't have to go to their website anymore and find everything. It's just right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I want this on all the boards now. The rest of the stuff, well, whatever apps. If you want them, you can use them, but not really. The recommended apps, they're obviously just getting some money from Norton and stuff, but being able to do this and then update the uh, UEFI that easily, yes. Overclocking. We did some magical voodoo on the 8700K that they sent us, and we got some really cool overclocks. I'm not going to show you a whole lot of performance. We'll just run Cinebench for you, multi-thread, but no single thread because that's for the video coming up. We ran 8700K at 5.1 on one core and 4.9 on all six with hyper-threading enabled. It's bouncing back and forth here, but if you look at hardware info, you can see we've got a couple of cores bouncing up to 5099.8, and we're gonna run a quick CPU te test for you on Cinebench. We're running this on air. This is on a Noctua. I mean, that's a beastly Noctua. That's almost the equivalent of like an H100 as far as cooling goes, but not quite. Yeah. And with six cores, it's probably at the limit of what this Noctua can handle with this kind of an overclock, but it's doing it. We've got 87 on our hottest core. Which isn't that's bad. up there, but it's still air cooling, and it's 5.1. But on the top check board. our results. We're right below the Ryzen 7 eight cores at 1581. Now that's because the IPC is pretty high on this. Very high. So you got IPC, but you're using a lot of wattage on this. So it's a 95 watt. Well, we're running at 5.1. Remember, so right. 95 watt TDP suggested, and software isn't the best way to measure CPU wattage. We know. But just for a general idea of what we're going through, you know, 137 watts at our CPU package power. That's pretty high over the TDP. Yeah, way over the t 95 up to that, yeah. So there you guys have it. The ASRock Fatality Z370 motherboard. It's really loaded. You're getting a lot for the money, but it's also gonna be a lot of money for all these bells and whistles. And you can get similar performance at a lower price point if you sacrifice a few things. So it's all gonna be like, how many bells and whistles do you need? And that's really gonna be the story with, with this motherboard. If you want everything with whipped cream on top and chips, mix them together and stir it up, then there you mm. go. <laughs> that's the board for you. So it should actually be a little bit better for gaming performance now, uh, seeing as it has a higher IPC, but that's gonna be with the CPU. Check out that video coming very soon. All right, guys, see you in the comments.